I'd like to give you a little background on homeopathy and some explanations that may be of value to you and your clients. Many of us have heard like cures like is the basis of homeopathy. And let me give you a couple examples of that. What that means is something in its chemical form can create XYZ symptoms. If I take the energetic pattern and use that to treat a patient, it would cure those XYZ symptoms. An example of this, a very common one uh, that's easy to understand is mercury. Uh, many of us, when we were kids, played with the mercury balls, and we know if the mercury gets into the body and the tissues, it has an affinitive to lodge in the central and peripheral nerve system, causing problems. So in the chemical form, the mercury produces those symptoms. If I take the energetic pattern as a homeopathic, when I take that form, it would stimulate my body to look for that pattern and remove it from the tissues. Thus, stimulating my body to remove the mercury and those symptoms would be decreased. Also, another common one is called cinchona. It's a Peruvian bark. If I go down and strip it off the tree and start chewing on it, I can actually be medically diagnosed with malaria in about 30 minutes to 90 minutes. So if I take a portion of that bark and unlock the electromagnetic fingerprint, use it in the homeopathic form, it would cure all of those symptoms or stimulate my body to fight against those symptoms. A background on homeopathy, it's, it's been around for thousands and thousands of years. A medical doctor named Hahnemann, fluent in seven languages several hundred years ago, he says in all the knowledge that he has as a doctor, he wanted to discover if God had given a universal law that you could found or base healing on. And he rediscovered homeopathy and has written several books and really comprised what we are now familiar with. So with homeopathy, you must understand that everything in life has an electromagnetic fingerprint, just like it has a chemical fingerprint. The mouse, the glass, the water, calcium, magnesium, potatoes, all those can be identified by chemical analysis. Well, they all have an electromagnetic fingerprint. And how they get that fingerprint into the liquid, in the classical homeopathy, if I was making a remedy for mercury, and they have de several dilution series. X is Roman numeral 1 to 10. C is just a 1 to 100 dilution. M is 1 to 1,000 and so on. So if I wanted to make a 6X dilution of mercury, what I would have had to have done back then was take one part mercury, nine parts alcohol and water, and then I would shake it a specific number of times to get it to start to transfer its signature into the liquid medium. Once I have that 1X formula, if I wanted to make a 2X formula, I would grab another nine parts alcohol and water and take one part of the 1X formula and then shake it. And a 3X formula is one part of the 2X, nine parts alcohol and water. And you can see how fast this becomes dilute. And in physics, there's Avogadro's theorem. If you do this 24 times, there's not one physical molecule of the substance left. Yet in homeopathy, as you diluted it even more, it became more powerful. And it wasn't until quantum physics that they could explain why. Because in the dilution and shaking process, this was literally transferring signatures or copying signatures of the electromagnetic field into the carbon bonds of the alcohol and the water. So the more I diluted it, the more energy patterns were there, the less chemical substance. And that was the foundation for, for all of homeopathy. You must remember with homeopathy, like cures like. It's not exact cures exact. And I'll give you a, an, an example of that. For instance, in the system we have several families of pathogens, the virus, the bacteria, the prions, mycoplasma, mycotoxins, parasites. And if we take uh, a classic one, um, if we look at the Lyme bacteria, which is really interesting. Once it enters the body, they can detect it chemically for several months and then they can't detect it because it mutates 
to protect itself. It changes its protein sheath like viruses do to protect itself from your immune system. So as that mutates, the body will pick the closest frequency of that mutation and stimulate your own body to address or attack that. In fact, they used to think the immune system was chemically based. They've now proven the B cells go out and take electromagnetic, electromagnetic patterns of the different pathogens, go back to the nodes, load this information into the T cells and says, whatever has this exact pattern, go kill. And that's how our immune system is so precise. Sometimes it has items it doesn't know what to do. With this technology, we give it the potential to select what it needs to heal itself. The power of the technology is the patient's body shows us the realization of those potentials, where it broke down, what it needs to do to fix it. And then we as clinicians and doctors review that information. We also use our knowledge to maybe add additional supplements to support areas that we see weaknesses. I'd like to go into the technology a bit. Uh, you've heard us talk about energy patterns and meridians. Uh, Many of us are familiar with the meridians, the Chinese meridian system. And uh, they've been using that for thousands of years. They did a study in France not many years ago where they used radioactive isotopes and they injected them, different ones into the skin, a different one into the, the nervous system, the lymphatic, the circulatory system. And in this case, they injected a point on the outside digit of the foot, a bladder point. And they traced these through the body, and for the first time, Western medicine was actually able to prove that these meridians or energy pathways existed. And what they noticed is these meridians followed right along the nerve bundles, but were a separate system. And in fact, the radioactive isotope, the speed that it moved through the associated meridian and organ had a direct correlation to the pathology. And that's what we're indicating here with the reds and the yellows. When there's a stressed or an inflamed response, the energy is moving through very quickly. If there's a weakened or a degenerative response, the dead tissues are actually blocking the flow of energy and it decreases. Whereas in health, the energy moves through at a certain rate. Now, as we talk about these energy fields, um, I've got a background in engineering and let's re reverse engineer or talk about the body for a second. If, if I were to pass away, they can actually measure the weight of this energy field that is my, whether you call it spirit, life force, chi, aura, innate intelligence. When this pattern of energy leaves the body, fairly quickly, the physical cells start breaking down and dysfunctioning. So if you reverse engineer it, you should be able to say that that energy pattern keeps us in the form and shape that we're in. And according to homeopathy, all true disease processes alter that field of energy first. Once that field has been altered or damaged, it then creates a representation in the physical tissues. And so what we've done with the Asira is we want to ignore the end result of the majority of those symptoms and focus on the root cause, what actually broke down that energy pattern. And then when we imprint those signatures into a liquid medium, I'll often explain to patients that this amounts to a software program for your intelligence, for your spirit, for your aura, for your chi, your life force, whatever you feel comfortable with saying. This is a software program that carries the information of these frequencies that we found of benefit, when you take that, it goes in and tells those patterns to start restructuring to an optimum level. Once they're restructured, which is usually within minutes, then the physical tissues start to mirror that structure and correct themselves. And this is the power of the technology, is their body picks what it wants and their body does the healing. We're helping out with the imprint, and so you can understand now how the imprint works with that energy information. And some patients have a hard time going, this can hold that information, and I'll often explain to them, well, what do you think a floppy's doing? 
or a USB is another form, or a record, or a CD. There's multiple forms that can carry information. We just put it in a form and a medium and a pattern that the body can utilize to upload that software and correct itself. Let's go over a few clinical tips. Uh, one that will really help you just right off the bat is we've mentioned the use of the test plate. And I used to have patients literally bring in bags of supplements they'd collected over the years, want me to test them. And what I did clinically to help with this is I would do up to 10 supplements on the test plate for free. Any other supplement after that, I would charge them a dollar. So then all of a sudden, those bags of supplement they've had for 40 years, they really just want to test the ones they're currently on. Also, if you're doing allergy testing of specific foods, you'll notice that in the, the list of foods, it'll show that you reacted to beans and the cure is the beans. And again, this is the homeopathic law. In this case, the beans in the chemical form is causing the reaction. The energetic form or the imprint or the homeopathic is the cure to that issue. So as you go through and review uh, an allergy panel now, it'll make more sense if it shows uh, they failed the test for dairy and it's showing milk and feta cheese. That means in the chemical form, that's contributing to the problem. In the energetic form, it's addressing that problem. As we've mentioned before, sometimes it's a little difficult to review the information because we're looking at the root cause. Let me give you a couple examples. We've had several patients uh, that we've had blood chemistry on that they show anemia. We run them through the system. One patient showed malabsorption of copper which we imprinted to help their body absorb copper, and the copper was needed to help them move the iron into the cells without giving them an iron supplement. Within 30 days, the blood chemistry went back to an optimum level. We had another patient with the uh, anemia, and in his case, it showed up that they did need an iron supplement that they were deficient in. So again, with this system, we're looking for the root cause. For instance, if they have cancer, one day they just didn't magically wake up and poof, they had cancer. There's usually an inherited predisposition or some chemical toxins involved. And what the system does is says, what triggered the cascade? We've got to remove the trigger, and if there's anything left, then we'll work on those on the next issue. And here's a prime example. A doctor had a patient with osteonecrosis of the jaw. Basically, the jawbone was wasting away. They'd done hormone therapy. They'd done surgeries with replacement. They'd done multiple treatments with no response. They ran them through the Osira, and it was really interesting. The first thing that came up, almost everything, was related to emotional issues with Bach flowers, bush flowers, North American flowers, emotional freedom technique. And as they started talking with a patient, he's recently getting divorced. His house had burned down. He's got some other financial issues, and the body said, this is the key. If I can't fix these emotional issues first, nothing tied into them is going to be corrected. So they gave him the remedy, had him come back in a month. The next items that showed up were chemical toxins. Once his body pulls those out, the next item that came up were allergy, autoimmune, and inherited weaknesses. And finally, on the fourth visit, his body then started picking specific remedies to build the tissues in the jaw, and at that point, for the first time in four years, the jaw tissues started to strengthen and rebuild. So again, if we look at it, a physician, we want to find a specific remedy for the osteonecrosis of the jaw, and the body said, no, unless I heal this key issue first, that's never going to happen. And so the body will step us through, it'll pick its priority, it'll say, here's my first priority, move to the next, move to the next, but along each step, the patient feels progressively better. Many of you are curious if we can do surrogate testing, and the answer is yes. The process, uh, you could either get a hair sample, fingernail sample, blood, urine, saliva. I try to stay away from the fluids because they're hard to ship and you've got to dispose of them correctly. Oftentimes, I'll get a fingernail sample and a hair sample from the back of the neck, usually half a dozen. I would take that sample that they've sent me, put on the test plate, and as long as I'm on my drops, my fields are neutralized. I would then enter in the patient's 
that I'm testing their demographic information, select the tests that I'm going to run for those, hit start, and I would hold the electrodes and be the surrogate. The body, as the system operates, the test plate is always in operation. It will actually grab those patterns, those DNA, RNA, PNA, genomes, chromosome patterns that are stored there, all the electromagnetic signatures that are stored, and it will bring that and overlay it on my body and run the test through that pattern to differentiate what that individual I'm doing a surrogate test works for. So again, step one, you need to make sure that you've tested yourself and you're on the appropriate drops to neutralize your fields. Step two would be to take that sample, hair, blood, urine, saliva, fingernails, put on the test plate. Step three, enter in the client or the patient information that you're going to do the surrogate test for, select the test, hit start, and then you would grab the electrodes. Oftentimes the remedy I'm taking I'll have in my pocket to make it even stronger. And you're going, how can this have an effect? Dr. Vole, uh, who helped develop EAV originally, as he developed the technology, they would take the readings on the acupuncture point, and he was doing a seminar for medical doctors, and one of the medical doctors had specific problems, and Dr. Vole found them and said, you know, if you take this product, it should correct that. And they went and broke for lunch. They came back, and he started retesting that doctor, and all the readings had went into the green or back to a healthy state. And he says, wait a second, what's going on? Did you do anything? And he says, oh yeah, I went and picked up that remedy you told me, and I've got it here in my pocket. And what Dr. Vole then realized was the electromagnetic field was altering the meridians, and it was showing us the potential of what would happen if he physically took that product. And in a sense, that's what a lot of this testing is. It's showing us the potential of what can happen when they take the imprint or the nutritional or herbal supplements that comes up. What I'd like to do is go over a little bit of the laser protocol. And you can make it as simple or as complex as you'd like. The simple form I prefer and find it just effective as some of the complex ones. Once I've imprinted the laser, I would then take it, as I mentioned before, and move it far enough away from the patient that it covers the entire body from left to right. I would then start from the head, move all the way down to the feet, sweep back up to the head. That's one. I would do it again. That's two. And I would do it again. That's three. And then just to make sure, I would do the same process over the right ear, three sweeps, and the left ear, three sweeps, because the ears have all the auricular points that go to the meridians. Then, if you wanted to do any specific programming, for instance, if I had a thyroid problem, I could go into my hold tank, uncheck all the items except for my thyroid remedies, imprint or re-imprint the laser, and then I could do a specific sweep just over the thyroid. So you can target specific areas or do broad areas. One thing you will want to do is patients that are highly allergic, keep it to a very minimum. If you're not careful, you can actually trigger an allergy response by having their body try to work on these items so quickly. And so that's the basics of the laser therapy and how simple it is. Another advantage to the laser, many doctors have patients who want to refrain or stay away from alcohol products. So instead of sending them home with a liquid medium, you could imprint into their laser, have them take that laser, and they can sweep themselves morning and night, just as we've indicated, instead of taking the drops. And then when they come back in, you can reprogram their laser for the next treatment. That's a wonderful advantage to the laser. For acupuncturists, you can screw the head off, replace it with the pointer head, and lays into specific acupuncture sites that you're familiar with and that you're educated in. So there's multiple ways to apply the laser. What you're going to do is use the methods that make the most sense to you in your clinic. But again, try to keep it to a minimum 
We don't want to accelerate the process so they get a major healing crisis.